Hi everybody, it's Christopher. Well, I'm going to do this little segment just for our group before I do a whole segment and put it up online on YouTube. So, right now I was talking to my friend Cindy, our other admin on the group, and she was talking about doing some reupholstering and she had some Tommy Bahama fabric with palm trees and she's going to do some embroidery with palm trees that she has and I thought, you know what, I think I have that CD. So I pulled it out. This is actually from 2002, and it had all these beautiful palm tree designs. Came on a CD, as you can see. So I decided to sew it out, you know. And you know, Christmas is right around the corner when you stop to think about it. For all of us who sew, because it takes so long for us to make gifts for everybody that we need to start in August. And this is the end of August already. And last year I got a head start. I was in the early August, so. But I've been making bags because I had orders for bags, so the or, um, stuff where I'm making for personal gifts has been a little bit behind. But anyway, uh, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on my leather bag, I decided to sew this out and see how it sews out. So what I'm going to use today, I decided to pull out my Singer Futura. This is a 6x10 hoop. I've got canvas that I bought from Walmart. And the lady told me they're not going to carry the white canvas anymore, which I'm really bummed out because every time I go there, I'm looking for more white canvas. And she said they're not going to be stocking it anymore. They have it in other colors, but this was a nice canvas they had. Now, this has been washed and ironed. And then I put a fusible interfacing on the back, 911FF that's usually used for garments and everything and I love that to beef it up and then I'm using a cutaway stabilizer to float underneath so and I'm going to be using a, a metallic threads so here is a top stitch needle that I'm sewing with size 14 top stitch needle uh, let's see what else can I tell you top stitch needle I'm using metallic threads I'm going to use the sulky silver um, gold I mean I got a Madeira Silver. I went in the software program and I changed the colors around a bit. So I'm going to um, sew this out and then I'll show you the results, okay? So I hope you guys are busy with your uh, machines in your studio and thinking about gifts for Christmas because, um, honey, it's not going to be that far away. It's not that far away. A little trick I want to share with you all these singers they like to start sewing a few stitches in the center then they'll drag a spider web to where it's going to sew so if you have this these uh, future machines a uh, trick I have I like to do is I like to push the forward button about I think it's five or six times before it actually moves into the right position to actually start sewing so watch what I do yeah that was six times so that's what I like to do. normally He'll sew in the center and then he'll like go way far away. It's a, it's a flaw. I mean, for me, it's a flaw. I don't know why they designed it that way, but these are things you learn with every brand machine that you have to work around. So let me make sure my foot is down. Yep. And then give it a start. I've got this. This is um, metallic thread. All right. And let me trim that and go. Oh, did I trim? Oh, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. I must have trimmed too, too close. You see, something's always going to happen, right? So let me figure out what's going on here. This is my first color, which is metallic. Do it again. See, nothing's ever perfect, right? All right? Let's do the needle up and down button here. Whoops. Come okay, on. Needle down, needle all the way up. There we go. And I got the damn camera on the way, so I'm leaning over to see, guys. 
All right. We go backwards a couple. All right. There it goes. Now, yeah, just be careful. When I cut that, and let's go. Soft piece of thread sticking up that I want to trim off. I'll wait till it goes back up. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There we go. So this was supposed to be white. The CD wanted this to be white, rayon, or poly. And I'm switching it up to metallic. And I also want to shut the scissor cutter off on this machine. Because every time the scissor cutter goes on, the thread pops out of the needle. That's just a flaw of this machine. And then the bobbin thread gets all messed up. So, I have videos on this on YouTube, on the Futura embroidery machines, if you guys have one. It has a lot of engineering flaws, but once you have the setup done properly and everything, you can work around the flaws, and it really, really sews out well. It really does. Oops. It really does. Sorry about that. Again, I got the camera in front of me, and I'm trying to move my arms around. Sorry, I apologize. I forgot to show you guys my setup. And I, I have this setup on all my other videos I show you on YouTube uh, in the past. But I want to show you this. See, I've got my little cup there. My little cup there acts like a ball bearing. So when it embroiders, there's no drag. Now remember, metallic threads have to be fed from the side. Whether you feed it this way or horizontally, it always has to be fed out from the side. You know why? So it doesn't kink. And then you need something that allows it to not have any gravity weight so it flows really nice so this acts like a ball bearing you can see I'm barely touching that and it moves very gently that's very important when you're embroidering with metallic threads very important so keep that in mind when you're embroidering okay all right and even when you're doing decorative sewing stitches using uh, metallic thread for regular sewing. That's how you have to feed metallic threads. And the top stitch needle is great to use uh, because the eye of the needle is a lot longer and accommodates the movement of that metallic thread so it doesn't fray. Okay, it's done. And like I said, I shut the scissor cutter off because I don't want that thread popping out. So now I'll just trim this and I'll change the thread and we'll move forward. All right, I want to point out something to you, everybody. Let me see if I can get a close-up here. All right, so the thing I don't, that one of my pet peeves about this machine is this little pigtail, okay? If you don't wrap that around two times around that pigtail, and it's going to get caught there and it'll cause the thread to break. I've said this in all my other videos. I wish they would have put a bar right here like all the other sewing machines have where the thread just slips behind the bar instead of this pigtail because this pigtail is a pain in the ass. It really is. But once you know how the workarounds and stuff, then it's okay. Now, these machines were being sold on HSN for a long time when my friend Darlene was selling them. And... Um, they were selling at really good prices and it came with software that allowed you to digitize and do all kinds of things. There really was a big bang for the buck with these machines. Let me see if I can get you to show you what this is here. There. And this is the this is the Futura Quintet. They changed the name of the machines, you know, they had the they always changed the name of it because they always included something different. Like they may have included an additional um, software that had photo stitch or this and that but basically it's the same model machine and the other thing that's the same about it uh, they had two of them one had the little digital computer screen which you see here 
and the other one just had buttons that lit up with LED lights. So th those were the two different models, and they were all, always putting them under different names, under different model names. But it was only because they changed the software and the color of the machine. That's all they ever did, is change the color and the software of the machine. That was it. All right, let's continue. Put it down. Ah, oh, needle. I gotta raise the needle back up again. There we go. See that? It's got brains. This machine does have brains, and it does give you warning signs, which is good. You just have to pay attention to everything. And see, even someone like me who's been selling a long time still forgets things. Boy, this is gonna be really pretty. This is uh, silver with uh, gray. So, you know, I altered from what the suggested colors were to use. And I like my metallics and stuff, so. That's really coming to life and looking pretty, isn't it? Really looking quite pretty. I love the sparkle that the metallic thread gives. See how stupid that was? <laughs> Singer. I don't know. I always say to myself, who the hell invented this, uh, created this software for Singer? Because some of the software is so great, but it's like, that was unnecessary to drag that from there to there. So unnecessary. And their software always does that. But you know what? That's the flaw to having one, right? All right, let me change the thread. Hey, right, now I'm on gold. Metallic gold. Now I want to stop right here and tell you all, you can see why brother machines are so much more popular because they're so much easier to thread and operate. Now this, uh, this embroidery machine will work just fine if you're experienced and you have the patience to get around all the little, little uh, quirks that it has. But uh, if you're going to buy an embroidery machine, you know, don't buy one of these machines used because people may have messed it up and everything buy an embroidery machine by like brother or baby lock they're the easiest to use in the market and i've been even told by bernina people that are bernina fans they said i've got a bernina for regular sewing but i bought a, a baby lock or a brother for embroidery so um but if you are ex very experienced and you have a lot of patience then go ahead and get one of these singer machines but if you're going to buy it used because they don't make this anymore most of them out there are used if you buy used, make sure the person you're buying it from, you sit down and have them <clears throat> sew and embroider it out to make sure it's working. Because a lot of dealers, a lot of private repair dealer shops will not touch these machines. They will not touch it. Once they went, when these machines started to be sold on HSN and online, the dealers wanted nothing to do with them because uh, Singer was not reimbursing them, I guess I heard. Anyway, this is just stories I've heard, but I know for a fact that a lot of people said on the Singer groups that their local repair shops refused to uh, 
uh, repair these. So make sure that you find someone in the area that will repair these machines if you have to have any service done to it. But anyway, I'm just telling you all this stuff ahead of time. But I'll tell you one thing, get this machine just for the software alone. And then you have to have the machine connected to use the software. The software is worth, a f worth, worth the value on its own, trust me. I wanted to <clears throat> point out to you the quality of a good in digitized embroidery design. You see, this is going along the edges and how well it's, it's, it's hugging the edge because this has been compensated properly. And when I enlarged this design, uh, I did it in my Embrilliance and then I transferred it over to my Futura software and then adjusted the, the size to fit this hoop a little bit more. But because of the quality of the digitizing of this machine, it came out great. Now, when this was in my Embrilliant software, I selected it for medium weight canvas. That's what I did. Because you can select a fabric and the thickness of fabric that you're sewing on, and it'll automatically do the density for you. Isn't that nice? So, on the, uh, the Singer machines, you can set things too. But on the Singer, I'm sorry, the Singer Futuro software, you can. But I, I, if you can get the Embrilliant software, I love the Embrilliant software. And the, I work hand in hand with both of them because it's it just, you know, it's just, there's so much you can do with each and it's, you have fun. So if you're really into embroidery, you'll understand what I'm saying. Check this out everybody, look how beautiful, look how real, realistic that is, isn't that realistic looking? Oh my gosh, just beautiful. 
So I want to go over the threads that I used one more time so you guys know. Let me just get my camera set up here. So the threads that I used, the last thread I did that I used with this beautiful lime green color, this was Coates and Clark thread. Coates and Clark embroidery thread right here. Let me get my light out here so you can see. There we go. Coates and Clark embroidery thread. Very nice. Then the gold was sulky metallic thread. And then the silver, I used Madeira metallic thread. And then the other green was a sulky. And then I used like a burgundy color. It called for a pewter, but I thought, you know, the burgundy color would be nice. And this is sulky. And then here's the pewter that I used in another area. And that's sulky. Isn't that beautiful? And I have one more thread color. Here it is. Than this dark green by sulky I used. So these threads are readily available to you except for the Madeira. Madeira you buy from a sewing machine store. But the rest of these threads are readily available to you at the big fabric stores, you know, like Joann's and places like that. And I love this, um, this rayon by uh, Coates and Clark. It's uh, like a variegated. You can see it's got different tones to it. So it gave a little light, a little dark, a little light, a little dark. Isn't that nice? So experiment with different threads and you're going to get all kinds of different results. You don't have to follow the color chart, but you use it as a guide and you can supplement. Like I supplemented, this was, um, the sides here I believe were supposed to be a red, if I'm not mistaken, or a chart or something. And I said, you know, they'll look good gold. So this is, this turned out really beautiful. So the whole purpose of this video is if you've been embroidering a while and you've got a stash of embroidery designs, like I found this stash when, we, when I was talking to my friend Cindy and she was doing upholstery and she sent me a picture of her Tommy Bahama fabrics. And I said, you know, I think I've got a card. I think I got that CD for in, in Palms. And this, this was, I bought this way back in 2002 and it was for my 4x4 hoops and then, um, you know, there's a couple on here that are large, and this one I enlarged on my software to fit this 6x10 hoop. So, go back and look at your uh, embroidery designs and see what you've got. And this one, I went online to look, and they don't carry this anymore. I'm not, I don't see this being sold anymore. It was under this here. But there's other embroidery designs out there I saw. If you just do a Google search for palm tree embroidery designs, You'll find it. And like I said, this came with a, uh, it, was a, it was a CD. And then the embroidery designs in it. See? This is when they graduated from discs to CDs that you put in your machine. And some of the machines were starting to have a, a USB plug that you can plug in. Um, not a stick, but a USB cord from the machine. Then later on, which we have today, you have the USB thumb drive, and now the newer machines coming out are Wi-Fi. So, yeah, I was with these. I was doing embroidery when they first came out, just those little cards, you know. So I hope you enjoyed this little sellout, and I hope it inspired you to look at some of your designs and revisit your library. Sometimes all it takes is a friend to say, hey, look at the fabric I bought that I'm sewing with. And then you say, oh my gosh. I have something that would look good with that. So, anyway, take care, everybody. I hope this inspires you and get those machines out and start making some gifts. This is going to be a pillow. I'm going to turn this into a pillow. This is beautiful. Maybe I'll do some painting around it or something, too. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.